The Staffel Department is honored to have you here to participate and share in the launching of our demonstration, Backyard Aquaponics Farm. It is my pleasure to welcome you. Thank you for coming. Many of you have traveled long distances and are here on very tight schedules. This serves to remind us how important our work is. The department is committed to actively advancing a sustainably governed fisheries sector that will enhance long-term profitability and contribute to food security. We want fishers, fish farmers, and everyone within the value chain to achieve the maximum economic benefits of the sector within the limits of, the, of a healthy environment. Our task is to make it possible. As such, last year, the department decided to use some of the funding provided by the Republic of China, Taiwan, under the Fisheries Development Project to expand our fresh and marine aquaculture program to incorporate aquaponics. This was influenced by a series of factors but driven by requests from various interest groups for the department to provide practical step-by-step -step guidance to establish aquaponic gardens and farms. Aquaponics is the farming of fish or other aquatic animals and plants together in a constructed ecosystem. The water used to red a fish is also used to grow the plants. As such, it is soil-less farming. This works because the fish waste is converted to plant nutrients through natural bacterial cycles. While staff was fully aware of aquaponics technology and the aquaponics initiatives pursued by neighboring islands, this was a new area to the department. Therefore, to make it possible to provide that step-by-step -step guidance, we needed to start by building the capacity of staff. Recognizing that aquaponics is two disciplines, aquaculture and hydroponics, which is the growing of plants in soilless nutrients, as well as a bit of construction know-how, capacity building initiatives had to target not only the staff of the Department of Fisheries, but also the Department of Agriculture. Being under the umbrella of the same ministry, with the same policy directive, the collaboration was well suited. Consequently, Four staff members were selected to undergo training at Indies Green Aquaponics in, in Antigua. They were selected based on the area of expertise. They are Mr. Leroy Ambrose and Ms. Kate St. Mark for Aquaculture and Extension Services, Mr. Fermin Lafay for Crop Farming and Extension Services, and Mr. Jonathan Corazmin for Engineering Services. After one week of training sessions in Antigua, staff was challenged to set up a working aquaponic system upon return. They received much guidance and assistance from other staff of the ministry, aquaponics farmers within the region, as well as Water Greens Aquaponics, which is St. Lucia's first commercial aquaponics farm. The ministry contracted the services of engineering group, solutions group, to construct the aquaponics farm in December last year. And after working under the guidance of Mr. Ambrose, it was completed in January of this year. We brought on board Ms. Steffi Smith as an aquaponics assistant, and she has been leading the efforts to operational the farm thus far. We have been working to grow fish and plants successfully in the aquaponics using the aquaponics technology. And while there were challenges along the way, we got it done. As such, we are delighted to share our outputs with you today, including a taste of our first crop grown. The project does not stop after this phase. The department is trying to source funding and to work together with a wide cross-section of institutions and people with the knowledge base and all resources to develop other systems suited to our island. Additionally, we will continue to work with the Department of Agriculture to help bring this system of food production into the public eye. 
and to provide guidance to aquaponics interests. Assistance, as well as assistance with niche marketing, is also envisioned in the future. While aquaponics is more sophisticated than other traditional forms of farming, requiring more intensive monitoring of water quality and some level of initial trial and error to get the right balance of fish and plants in the system, the technology is inclusive of gender and age categories and is not dependent on scale or crop grown. It can be scaled up to a large system for big food production businesses or scaled down to a community facility, a school, a private home, a backyard garden, or even a tiny unit for the kitchen. Above all, the system can utilize low-cost, locally available materials. Plus, there is the added benefit of organic produce. So, I hope you will be excited and inspired to pursue opportunities in aquaponics. Whether you are an educator, student, backyard gardener, entrepreneur, commercial farmer, hobbyist, or just simply want to try something new. And before I hand over, I want to say once more, welcome. It's a pleasure to share with you our progress. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Peter, for a detailed overview of this model and this aquaponic facility. At this time, I will welcome to the podium Councillor Mr. Edward Tao, representative of the Ambassador Mr. Raymond Mu, who will greet us with some remarks on behalf of the Ambassador. So it is my great pleasure to attend the launching ceremony of the aquaponic demonstration farm at the Department of Fisheries. This facility showcased another good result of the cooperation between St. Lucia and Taiwan. Over the years, my country has collaborated in many areas with the St. Lucian government, and one of the most significant aspects is agriculture. We have worked with the Department of Fisheries to set up aquaculture cooperation project at Union to supply high-quality tilapia fingling. And I have personally traveled to a library to attend a seminar lead by Sunny and Eason to uh, assist local farmers to farm fresh water fish. And Taiwan has also provided assistance in the training of fishers and the rehabilit rehabilitating fishing landing spots in Savannah Bay and Presling Bay. And as an island nation ourselves, um, Taiwanese has been fishing for hundreds of years. Today, uh, we are one of the largest global leaders in freshwater and marine aquaculture development. Taiwan exports tens of thousands of fishery products every year to the world. We believe that diversification in the agriculture sector is vital to food security and economic development. And we would like to share our experience with our friends in St. Lucia. Aquaponics, as the chief um, has said, is a new food production system which combines uh, the features of aquaculture and the hydroponics to produce uh, fish and vegetables at the same time. It is very productive and more productive than the conventional farming methods, taking smaller space and using less energy and fresh water. So I believe aquaponics has great potential on an island nation such as St. Lucia, where land and fresh water resources are limited. And to pairing with our well-established aquaculture facility in Union, which is supplying ample tilapia fingering, I believe it is a good time to introduce aquaponics to St. Lucia. And we are delighted that some of our fundings are well used by the department to establish this modern farm. And actually, I've passed over this place for a couple of times and now very interested. So I'm very delighted to be able to come here today. And in closing, I just want to once again congratulate the Department of the Fisheries and all of the staff involved in the planning and operation of the aquaponics demonstration farm. I'm sure it will serve as a very good model in providing practical information and the training techniques. And I encourage all the stakeholders who are interested in aquaponics to make full use of this facility. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Tao. 
At this point, we will welcome Mr. Darius Gabriel, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources, and Cooperative to present the feature address. Welcome, Mr. Gabriel. It is, it is now abundantly clear to the entire world and to low-lying states in particular that climate change is a reality that portends dire consequences for those territories that are either ill-equipped or incapable of adequately confronting it. The same is true of human economic activity. Those sectors of the economy that are unable to successfully negotiate the challenges of climate change will have a difficult time surviving in the near to distant future. Well, it's no secret that agriculture is extremely sensitive to the vagaries of climate and weather. One simply needs to look back at our recent history of droughts, the Christmas Eve trough, and Hurricane Thomas to be reminded of that. Therefore, countries like St. Lucia have no choice but to seek and find technologies for agriculture that will build resilience to climate change. We believe that aquaponics is one such technology. For example, given the reduction in the use of water, aquaponics appears to be an appropriate technology for use in drought-prone areas. It is also no secret that St. Lucia has very limited land space and that there is ever-increasing competition and demand for land on the island. Technologies that can minimize agricultural out maximize, I'm sorry, that can maximize agricultural output and consequently food production on smaller and smaller areas of land would therefore be highly beneficial to us. When the limited availability of land is taken together with the high premium placed on water resources, then it's easy to appreciate that in terms of the pressure placed on our limited natural resources, aquaponics constitutes a double whammy of benefits in that it reduces the demand for both water and land for food production. As has been explained, one of the products or byproducts, depending on how you choose to conceive of the system, of aquaponics is fish. Fish is animal protein of high biological value to humans and is a much sought after commodity due to its perceived health benefits. The high demand for fish and fish products can readily be appreciated by a cursory examination of available data. In 2013, earnings from the sale of fish were to the tune of $25.9 million an increase of 2.3% over 2012, despite a 4.1% decline in fish landings over 2012. In 2014, there was an increase in earnings over 2013 of 1.2% to $26.2 million. Landings increased during that time frame to 1,695 metric tons. In 2015, there was a 4.9% decline in earnings from fish sales to $24.9 million. Note that in spite of there being a decline, the value is still $24.9 million. And that was due to a 13.6% drop in fish landings to 1,464 metric tons. For the same periods, the fish and fish products Import bills, import bills, sorry, were 20.1 million, 17.3 million, and 20.4 million, respectively. These figures do not include seafood of any type. So, merely on the basis of that data, one can deduce that the demand for fish and fish products over the past three years had an average annual dollar value of some 45 million EC dollars. All of this is taking place against a backdrop of declines in fish landings, as were recorded in 2013 and 2015, that have been attributed to unfavorable environmental and marine conditions associated with climate change. The degradation of coastal habitats, 
as well as reduce stock of fish due to the overexploitation of marine fisheries through illegal fishing practices. Any technology that could help supply the demand for fish, reduce the fish or food import bill, and reduce the pressures on our marine environment demands our attention. Another not to be underestimated benefit of aquaponics is the supply of food that is generally free or with relatively low values, low levels of the chemicals that are normally used in agricultural production, inorganic fertilizers in particular, which have garnered much suspicion in recent times in the context of the high prevalence of certain non-communicable diseases in St. Lucia, in particular cancers, and to a less extent, high blood pressure. It is clear that the technology can contribute to the supply of healthier foods free of such potentially harmful substances. Aquaponics fits nicely into the policies of government with regard to farming and fishing. For example, government has signaled its intention to, among other things, foster a commercialized and entrepreneurial approach to farming and fishing, ensure sustainable use of natural resources, introduce adaptable technology, enhance national food security, and make agriculture more attractive to young people. A very, very important set of policy objectives for the sector. Without question, aquaponics is going to be part of the achievement of all of these policy objectives. In light of the foregoing, we at the Ministry will give every support to and will encourage the Department of Fisheries to continue to do the required research and experimentation that would explore different designs incorporating different material and generate important information such as cost of production so that we can provide future entrepreneurs with a complete package of information relating to the setting up of aquaponic systems in St. Lucia. We see this as being consistent with the Ministry's commitment towards the development of the agriculture and fisheries sectors and our continued efforts towards food and nutrition security. We commend the Department of Fisheries for this effort and look forward to bigger and better things. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gabriel. At this point, and just before we conclude this afternoon launch ceremony, we will invite Mr. Leroy Ambrose, aquaculturist in the Department of Fisheries, to present us with his closing remarks at this ceremony. Good afternoon to all. <clears throat> Today is truly a memorable occasion, well, for me, eh, because <laughs> I've been in aquaculture, I've been involved with um, aquaculture for so long. But anyway, I'm here on behalf of the Department of Fisheries. I'd first like to express my sincerest thanks to Councillor Edward Tao, who represents the Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan, and more so for all your financial support. Um, Taiwan for the Fisheries Development Project, more so. Um, we'd like to give thanks also um, to Dr. Darius Gabriel, Permanent Secretary, um, and other heads of units and staff of the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources, and Cooperatives for their continued support for, the, for this initiative because um, we must understand it was a together effort. To Mr. Um, Marcus Alcindor, an engineer, <laughs> good guy, who has gone beyond the scope of his contract to ensure that the system is functioning as it should and for his assistance in troubleshooting. Yeah, he assisted us. Also to Mr. Duke of Grosile, who has prepared a delicious Suskai for today's ceremony, which you will have the opportunity to indulge in shortly. <laughs> we also express thanks to all our distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
Thank you for taking the time to be with us today at this launching, and as I said earlier, this memorable occasion. I would like to, ensure, to assure you all that the Department of Fisheries will continue to provide technical assistance with the use of our staff and also advises through, our, for, through other existing Agriculture and Fisheries Incentive Act in the area of aquaponics. Um, well, as far as assisting you all, eh? okay? Additionally, the Department of Fisheries will be pursuing various avenues to get continued funding for the development of aquaponics, which we feel is and will play an integral role in the overall development of the sector. By having the farm model located in our backyard puts us in a better position to advise all aquaponic farmers because we are able to explore, troubleshoot, and correct issues that will arise, that we know will arise, when working with these aquaponic farmers. We invite you to be part of a tour of the aquaponics demonstration model later in the program. That will be advised with, um, by Ms. Edwin where you will have the opportunity to interact with all our staff, especially our trained staff in aquaponics. Once again, I thank you for taking the time out to be with us today.